Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. I have really been trying to find some control decks that could be played on a budget. You may have noticed I have built a lot of great budget decks for Skolomans Academy, but they're all pretty aggro. But what about control? I've been trying to do Big Warrior, but that just didn't work out. And I have to say the only control deck that you can play on a budget is yet again Priest. This is the budget priest deck that I have been playing. I've been hovering at 50% win rate slightly above with this deck, so it's not as good as the aggro decks. But it is a playable deck. You might even be able to climb with it after all, I'm playing fairly high in legend with this deck, so it should be easier further down on the ladder, of course. But overall, it is hard to play control on a budget. This priest deck closely resembles the deck that I already played during Ashes of Outland. It has four epic cards on it. There's two copies of Zetek Veilweaver and two copies of Plague of Death. Because basically you need that random generation in order to contest other decks if you want to play control. You have the priest Calagrant, Calagrant the Unspeakable, and with that you get the hero power to generate random priest minions, and that is a very important part of this deck, because generating random priest minions, there are quite a few good priest minions out there, you get access to cards that you don't otherwise have, and that's one of the key ways. And then Zetek Veilweaver, after you get a spell on a minion, add a priest spell to your hand. So you also get random stuff. You get random priest spells, which can also be good priest spells. Alongside renew, discover a priest spell. When you don't have these super expensive cards that in Hearthstone are mandatory in order to play control, then priest has the alternative path, which is to generate random stuff in order to play control. The only new card that has made the cut in this deck is Raisted. Sometimes good, on the other hand, you don't have those high value cards that you would like to be Raisted, so it's a little bit weaker in this one than it is in the full cost priest decks right now, but it's still a playable card, it's still pretty good, it still helps you win some games. So overall, this is the style of deck you need to play if you want to play control on a budget. How does that compare to current meta priest decks? There are basically two types of priest decks in the meta at the moment. There are these sorts of dragon priest decks, which are maybe a little bit more mid-rangey, and then there are these highlander priest decks, which are maybe a little bit more control. The thing about priest decks and building them is that you just can't build these on a budget. Because even though these have cards that seemingly are affordable, there's Draconic Studies, there's Wave of Apathy, some new cards like that. But the thing is, Wave of Apathy, Draconic Studies, Cobalt Spelkin, this whole package relies on Cabal Acolytes and Cabal Shadow Priests, and which are epic cards. So the whole idea of the whole stealing package only comes to life when you have these epic cards. And then you also need some soul mirroring and Morosond and Mind Flare cards. Without those super expensive cards, you just can't put the package together. And then it doesn't help you to put in something like Wave of Apathy into your deck, or Draconic Studies into your deck, or even Cobalt Spelkin into your deck, if you don't have these other cards which are super expensive and that you need in order to synergize with those. The whole priest package in Scholomance Academy is basically a support package to support expensive cards. And if you don't have those expensive cards, it doesn't help you to run those cheap cards either. The same also goes with the Highlander list. You just have to have these Highlander synergy cards. You have to have Soul Mirror or Kronks. If you don't have a bunch of legendary cards, there's no use building this whole concept, because the whole concept relies on those cards. And again, if you only have the support pieces, but not the payoff pieces, the support pieces alone do nothing. Nonetheless, these might give you some ideas on the direction that you can upgrade the deck into if you happen to land on a few legendaries. In the meanwhile, if you want to play control on a budget, this approach is the only viable approach, sadly. If you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and you can also support the content that I create by joining as a paying member here on YouTube or joining as a subscriber on Twitch, where I livestream six days a week. So check down below in the description for a link to my Twitch channel. And now, let's go take a look at Budget Priest in action. I might need a forbidden words against some other things. The meta decks are the best decks. Those really fast aggro decks are doing really well right now. You could try something like an Enrage Warrior if you really want to try to counter the aggro decks, but then you will fall prey to something like a Priest. So that is by no means a surefire answer. 
Yeah, this is the worst. Worst thing that can happen to you when you play Hearthstone. Although you have to play Priest yourself in order for this to happen. Your head isn't as empty as it looks. Which card would the Priest have in hand? They run Plague of Death. They have the Soul Mirror. They do. And look at that, now I have a Soul Mirror. I didn't have a Soul Mirror before. Because I'm a budget player. I didn't have access to cards like that. Oh no, they have erased it. The only reason to play Zeppris this early is when you have erased it. So that you can get more Zeppri. Is that even a word? Zeppri. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Yeah, I guess we can do that. But there's going to be a race dead in this priest's hand, and that's like all the all the cheap new cards that priest got are just really good support cards for expensive legendary cards, but useless on their own. So that's a difficult difficult position. Pow pow pow! And now I expect the board to be cleared. Might even get more soul mirrors. Yeah, kind of hard to contest the full full set of legendaries. They're pretty good, turns out. Soul mirror can be used next turn. Let's see if it is. I need to try to play a very tempo-based game here. It's unlikely so. There would be a soul mirror on this board. This board doesn't really seem worth it. Unless there's two in hand. If La Solo card is also a soul mirror, then the priest would use the original because they now know that I have theirs. And actually, they don't. They could tell them that I have my own soul mirror. Hmm. But short of that, then there will be some kind of some kind of shadow word play or something. Wear Wearing pants yet again. And then the death. No death. I'm genuinely surprised. If I play Rusty Trader... And then there's a Soul Mirror. That's not too great for me. I can Forbidden Words that. That plays around Soul Mirror the best. Because then I can heal this one. Then I can Forbidden Words that one. And then I can push face damage. Like this. So now Soul Mirror would leave these two alive. There's obviously also the coin, so there could be a one mana spell after the Soul Mirror. And that's a Soul Mirror. Is there a one mana spell? Really? Like you're not you're not kidding me or something? Okay, well that was a weird soul mirror play. There could be a Muros. If I play Soul Mirror, there could be a Murazond. To play it another Soul Mirror. How many of my minions died? No, I'm guaranteed to raise it these two if I raised it and get the Galagrant fully invoked. That's still not lethal though. So this one goes there, this one goes there, then I'll play the race dead. I'll get the disciples back, I'll play the disciples, I'll play the rusty, this one trades there, rusty trades there, this one pushes five in the face. So that's the play, now I have a fully invoked Galagrond, that I kill all the minions. I kill all the minions and I have a fully invoked Galagrond. Okay. What can we do from here? Now this priest's race that is obviously completely messed up because it's full of full of stuff. But this does not set up for lethal against any sort of AoE spell, so. Unbeknownst to him, but beknownst to me, my deck is full of bad cards. Another soul mirror? 
Now Galagron, does it hit the 5 1? It only kills one minion. Doesn't hit the 5 1? So Illusia cannot be played to steal my Galagron hit next turn. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm one off with the Galagron right now. I suppose this is indeed the best I can do here. And push. Sadly I'm one off. But maybe I can find a solution to that. Maybe. There could be a Kronks, of course. I don't have a Kronks. I'm a little sad about that. I would like to have a Kronks too. Kronks would be a fun card. There is a Kronks. There, also, there needs to be more than just the Kronks, but Kronks is a good start. Then there also needs to be a board clear. That simply isn't enough, you're dead on board. Well, they had expensive legendaries. We got to see four of them during that game, but they still died. So I want the ooze to remove one of the marrow slicers. We'll see what else. Raised can be strong. I might even be able to resurrect the news. If it's a control demon hunter, do I need to work on resurrecting a news? Instead of putting grand mummies in the pool. Serious question. And I think I may need to do exactly that. So I'm not playing a minion yet. We'll see how this goes. What is that? This is not Control Demon Hunter. This is just a weird Demon Hunter. Well, in that case I can play the Grand Mummy. Hmm. Intriguing. Well, Demon Hunter at least doesn't have any ways to buff the attack of that minion. So that's something. Demon Hunter doesn't want to do anything with the minion. I guess I'm fine. Let's chill. We can both chill. It's cool. Chilling is fun. What else, you weird Demon Hunter? What else? Why are you trading? This is weird. I could raise the disciple now and the grand mummy. Is that okay? I guess it's fine. Let's do that. By blood be born again. Mummy needs fire. I was looking at my face a little. Okay. That raised it is pretty good. This is a budget deck. Alright, then we boost that weapon away. Hit face a little bit with these. Really, really weird Demon Hunter deck. I mean, I guess it could be some kind of control deck. Who knows? It is some kind of control deck. Okay. It actually is. It actually is a control demon hunter. Just with a random sneaky delinquent thrown in. So I don't want to become a Galagrond yet. 
probably do want to use one rid of the infinite here. Just incoming damage a little bit. But now if there's well there cannot be the there cannot be militia because only one fragment is in the deck. My current answer to militia would have had to be double breath. Later on it can also be the plague. Another sneaky. Alright. So Malaysia is coming soon. At least potentially. Do I just drop a whole Nova here? I can save the whole Nova for later. I can do Breath. And then I can do Penance on the Paul Kelt. So that I can heal myself to full again. But this Demon Hunter hasn't really used any of the damage yet. Only one Marrow Slicer. Only one Marrow Slicer has been spent. More Holy Novas. Okay. I kind of hate to double Nova this board. I have to play the Soul Seologist. But Demon Hunter needs to shuffle more fragments before that. Maybe I'll do just one Nova. Maybe one Nova is fine. That means that my Yev gets to hit me. There might be some minions that have two health. There could be like Uzis. Or something. So maybe I can afford to take that four. It's actually two because this Nova will at some point heal me for two of that. The first Lapidary. I mean, I can't Forbidden Words the Macteridon. I don't expect the Mac to come right now, though. I think I just need to do it like this. Go to 24. But I've seen hardly any of the damage from the Demon Hunter deck yet. Most of it is still coming. So that's a pretty big problem. There's another Lapidary, a Marrow Slicer. All that stuff is still coming. Right, I need Forbidden Words that one, I believe. So let's just renew now. That's not great. Anything from Mind Vision. There could be something. Is it better than discovering a dragon? Eye beam. Eye beam is pretty much. There could also be like blade dances and stuff. Which don't actually do anything. Two random spells would be nice. I can get a spell with the cleric once I have a dragon. What sort of, I want the evasive worm actually. That can kill a. Yeah. Then I heal my face. And then I forbid any words. No. I first played Cleric for a Renew, and then I'll forbid any words that. Could have also played the Renew this turn, but I ran out of time there a little. So the Marrow Slicer comes alongside the Lapidary. I have the Evasive Worm here to handle that Lapidary. But there's still two slices left. Ooh, nice apotheosis. I think I'll use it. It's only three healing, but it's something. Or do I use it? I could use it later too. If I can pick up a rusty trader, for example. Is three healing really worth it? I guess it cannot be, right? Let's just renew my face here. Probably for Radiance, actually. I need all the healing I can find here. So heal more. Heal more. A basic room to kill the Lapidary. Alright. Well, now I have seen both Lapidaries and both Marrow Slicers. And one of the Chaos Strikes. So that, leaves, that leaves a little bit... and the Cane. So that leaves a little bit less damage for the Demon Hunter. That was snap pick. I wonder how much damage that's going to be. There's two Volpera spells in hand. 
Those can be a bunch of damage. Alright, let's see what we can pick up from this one. A cleric of scales, but I don't have any dragons. And I won't be able to get any dragons either. Well, then I need to simply chill. Then there's the Sociologist, and then there's the Macteridon. I have removal for only one of them now. So the Sociologist is being played this turn. But I have the removal for that one. But then there's the Macteridon. Well, I mean, Galagrond can kill the Macteridon, of course. Then I will just lose my ability to heal in the future. Am I going to get a dragon? Probably not in time. I think I'll just play the cleric. I might have picked up a dragon with the shield though. Alright, alright. Both slices are still left. And the wall blades are still left. And there's still a blade dance. So there is a fair bit of damage. There's the rusty raider that I was looking for. Splendid. This one and apotheosis. Heal for seven. I go back to twenty-five. And now the warrior has one war blades, one chaos strike, some slices. Picked up a silence from the Wolpera. Mm, surprising. But now there's totally a chance that the demon hunter will run out of damage. The Demon Hunter is frantically drawing through the deck. So both slices are in hand. There's no random cards in hand. Chaos Strikes have been used. So there's Warblade and two slices, that's 10. 11 plus 6. And Taunts can always be killed. And then there's the Macteridon. That is slightly worrying. This cannot kill any of these, even with the Reclaimer. It doesn't get the Battle Cry effect again. What? Next turn there is big enough of Blade Dance to kill all everything easily. So now it's going to be the war blades and slices and blade dance. But then that will mean that there's go not going to be enough cards left to wake up the Macteridon. That's the second blade dance. So there's a twin slice and there's Macteridon in hand. So there will be no way to wake up the Macteridon. Which means that I simply heal and play Galagrond. So I get rid of the board and Demon Hunter doesn't have the tools to wake up the Mac anymore, and so Demon Hunter runs out of damage. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.